Dr. Pete Myers from uh, Moz. Uh, it's a real pleasure to have him. Uh, I don't know that there's anybody who tracks what is changing and what's going on with as much rigor and calculating the statistics and everything else. If I'm ever trying to figure out, gosh, how many Google knowledge boxes are appearing these days, I can go to the tool that he oversees and rely on the data that he does. So to give you a tour of how Google's uh, SERPs have been changing, if you please welcome Dr. Pete. Thank you. Mike working? All right, good. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, everybody. This is actually my first SMX, so it's good to be here. Believe it or not, I have not made it to one in a while. So long story short, I run the Moscast project. Um, it's basically a weather station that tracks Google. And it was built around 2011 out of a frustration. And the frustration was this. Google had told us at the time, in fact, in congressional testimony, that they had made over 500 changes that year. And we knew we were tracking something on the order of half a dozen, maybe a dozen every year. And tracking those basically through them, confirming them, and some work, you know, work like Barry and Danny do. And it was, you know, it was extremely frustrating because it was so hard to just get that small amount of information, and yet we knew there was this massive gulf. And I started to ask, you know, is there a way we could take a very fixed set of keywords and a laboratory-like system and try to track how Google changes day over day? And we built this towards the beginning of 2012, launched in the middle of the year. A couple other tools actually launched right around the same time. And you know, it's been a really amazing journey, but it's also been frustrating because it turns out trying to see how Google changes day over day is very difficult. There's a massive amount of noise. SERPs are changing all the time, often in real time now. And at the same time, I started to realize that even if we could put a temperature on something, even if we could say something happened, we couldn't usually pin it down and at the same time, we were restricting ourselves to this very narrow organic ranking sphere. And the more I started to study SERPs, the more I started to see that there were all these things going on around the SERP. There was local, and there was paid, and there was knowledge graph, and there was verticals, and there was enhancements. And these things were not only getting more and more diverse, but they were growing. And it started to bother me, and I started to wonder, you know, when we look at rankings, and that's all we look at, and I work for a company that makes rank tracking tools, so what are we missing and what aren't we seeing? And that thing seemed to be growing. And so I want to talk about some of that today. I want to talk about what I've seen the last few months, what I think is coming in the next few months, and what I think we can do about it. All right, nobody started my clock, it looks like. <laughs> I'll hope for the best. Um, and I'm going to try and let the data do the talking. So if you know who I am and love my work, that's cool. If you know who I am and hate my work, that's cool too. If you have no idea who I am and you think, what kind of jackass puts his name right in the title, that's fine. <laughs> it wasn't my fault, but that's fine. I want you to listen to the data. I want you to let some of these screens speak for themselves. And I want you to know that somewhere in here, there is a niche that's affecting you and for you to start to prepare to how that's going to change in the next year or two. So first off, you remember this? Organic links. These were cool. <laughs> we used to have 10 of them on a page. And you have to get into some pretty boring queries now to see them. This is one for Nebraska unemployment. And if you're unemployed in Nebraska, I apologize. It's probably not boring for you. But for the rest of us, it's a little dull. Well, this is what a SERP sometimes looks like today. So we've got shopping at the top. We've got ads below it. We've got ads on the right. We've got an answer box. And then down at the bottom there is most of an organic. And hey, if you clicked on that more about probiotics, well, there's no organic at all. And by the way, this is high res on 24-inch screen. I'm not trying to cheat on these first few slides. Uh, I will zoom in later so you can see things, but these are all high res. Here's another one, search for buffets. Uh, Google isn't sure whether we want to eat or buy a buffet table, which I guess is fair. We didn't really tell them. So we can shop for buffet tables. We can eat at a buffet. These are the new local, uh, what I call the snack packs. We'll talk about those in a moment. And then there at the bottom, hey, there's a blue link and a little bit of a URL, and it's Yelp, and I don't even know if that's organic, really. And then we have the ones where there are organic, but Google has completely taken over. And these are pretty high-volume queries. This launched a couple of months ago. This is one for interest calculator. It's coming up on mortgage calculator. For whatever reason, whether they see an opportunity down the road or whether they just think this was too spammy or too useless, They've decided just to build their own and completely take over the SERP. And in this case, what happens to that number one ranking? You can say, look at me, I'm number one. 
But what happened to you when that launched? Zoom it in. We can probably look at that. Here's the mega video I call it. This is one for chandelier. Do you want to watch the video? Do you want to buy a chandelier? They don't know. So here's a giant video. Uh, see, it was just at the Grammys, so there's some news below that. No organic here at all. I've actually joked, if you want to rank for a broad keyword, have a pop song written. It's probably cheaper than a Super Bowl ad. I guarantee you would rank number one. I mean, that's a lot of real estate. And here's extreme personalization. This is coming out of Google now. Now, yes, this is personalized to me. But anyone who has a hotel reservation right now, anyone who has a Google account, this is what they're going to see. Three massive ads at the top. And then my reservation for the San Jose Marriott this week, no organic at all. And this is hotel reservations. This is a competitive query. What if you were trying to rank number one for that? What does that mean now? It means something completely different. All right, I know what you're thinking. Dr. Pete, you were cherry picking these examples. And yeah, sure. You know, it's more fun that way. But I don't think these are the exceptions now. I think these are the rule. And so I want to show you some data and try to convince you of that a little bit. So the Mozcast system, I'm going to come down because I'm really afraid that I'm going to fall off the stage right now. I walk around too much. So the Mozcast system attracts right now about 10,000 keywords across 20 industry categories. A pretty wide range of volume and competition and things like that. They tend to skew a bit commercial. So what I want to do is look through these 10,000, and we're going to look at the things that exist outside of organic, and how many of the SERPs in that set have them. So first of all, if we just look at verticals, images, news, and in-depth articles, almost half, 46%, have one of these. Let's add in the knowledge graph. Knowledge panel, answer boxes, carousels. We're up to 64% of the SERPs have either knowledge graph or some kind of vertical. Uh, what I call enhancements, video today isn't really a vertical, it's kind of an enhanced organic. So if we take video, review stars, and expanded site links, these are the big site links in number one that can take up a lot of real estate. We're up to 80%, four out of five have some kind of enhancement. Uh, if we throw in local, local packs, snack packs, one boxes, we're up to 82. Please understand, I'm not saying that local is 2%. Local is about 20% of our data, but this is cumulative. I'm just adding them up as we go. What this actually tells you when it only goes up 2% is that most of these local SERPs have something else going on in addition to local. So we're not just seeing one enhancement usually. We're seeing multiple. Add in paid blocks at the top, right, and bottom. And paid shopping, we're up to 97%. So only 3% of the 10,000 SERPs in our set have 10 blue links. This is not the exception anymore. This is the rule. And maybe the data's off a bit. Maybe this is not a perfect sample. I'm fine with that. But let's say I'm off by a margin of 20%. It would still be 77%. One in four would still have 10 blue links. And three in four would have something that goes beyond what we thought of as organic a few years ago. All right, I want to look at a few specific things that have popped up the last few months. I'm going to go fast. I apologize. Uh, middle of last year, towards the end, we had the local carousel. The carousel's kind of a little weird. It's this black box. It doesn't look like we thought things should look on Google. It scrolls across the whole screen horizontally. And at high res, we had here 14 local and six organic, something like 20 listings. Towards the end of last year, this got replaced by what I call the snack pack. And I think Mike Blumenthal rolls his eyes whenever I say that. Uh, and I love Mike, so listen to whatever he calls it. These are all three packs. Uh, these are specialized local results, and they have now gone to the left column and taken away a lot of that real estate. So now we've got three local, four organic. We've actually lost about two-thirds of what we had over the local carousel. But this is a more Google-looking thing. I'm going to zoom in. These are all rich. Uh, they have filters like rating, price, and hours for restaurants. You can go right in and actually search within that box and pull up more results. And these do not go to your website. These go to a specialized Google local knowledge graph. So this is taking you back to Google with information about your local presence. Some other examples, we've got music stores. So local businesses can have these, not just restaurants. Hotels, this was a big shakeup towards the end of last year. These boxes are hitting major markets for hotels. You can actually pick a date range and book your room straight from Google. These are essentially paid results. 
And we're starting to see it for products in major markets. So here's one for pool tables. It's treating that like a local result. It's pulling up a pack. So right here again, put in shopping advertising in the local pack. We have no true organic at all for a pretty major product query. Oops, skipped a couple. And I also want you to realize, and this is going to come up throughout the talk, these were designed for, for mobile. These fit a mobile screen. If you see the dots here at the bottom, you can actually scroll horizontally with a finger swipe on mobile. It's much more natural. You could view, in this case, up to 21 local listings before you see any organic at all. And we're seeing more of that. We're seeing more things designed for mobile. And we're seeing Google, Google take a mobile first mentality. All right, a bunch of things popping up in Knowledge Graph over the last few months. First of all, about a year and a half ago, we saw a big jump in Knowledge Graph. It went from about 17% of our queries to about 27%. And if you're wondering if my data is a good sample, it's interesting that last month Stephen Levy wrote a post on Medium. And he said that Google won't say officially what percentage of queries evoke a knowledge graph, but appears comfortable with a ballpark estimate of about 25%. I know about 25% is not too scientific, but hey, 27%, 25%, maybe I'm not nuts. This is kind of the knowledge graph we've come to know. This is the old school answer box. So you type in something that's kind of like a question Ghostbusters director, you get an answer. There's a specific answer. It comes straight out of Freebase, Wikipedia, whatever. You can see that if you pull up a knowledge panel for Ghostbusters over on the right, that's a snippet. That's kind of a factoid within that. You can actually use these to create all sorts of answer boxes. So if you go down to your release date and you say Ghostbusters release date, hey, what do you know? You get an answer box. So all those little factoids can kind of generate answer boxes, and they're very closely connected. There's kind of a problem with this, and it goes back to a problem from about 15 years ago in search. This is Yahoo Directory circa 2000. And remember at the time before Google really took off, we clicked on categories and we dove into those, and we had human edited knowledge. And it didn't work. And it didn't work because information was exploding so much faster than anyone could curate it or keep up with it. And what's interesting is that now that Google is trying to build a knowledge base, they've run into exactly the same problem that they tried to address as a search engine. Now that they're relying on human curated knowledge, it can't keep up. So they're running out of questions to answer. They're running out of information. And they can buy up more databases, but once you've got Wikipedia, and once you've got Freebase, and once you've got the CIA Factbook and all these things, there's only so much of structured information that you can buy. It just can't keep up. So they have to turn to their own index. And this is what we saw last launch last year. It's still only a couple percentage of SERPs, but I think this is probably the biggest change in search in the last couple years, and probably the thing that's going to herald the biggest changes over the, last, over the next five years. So this is the new answer box. This is a query for SSL. It's basically giving you a definition. But this is not coming from the knowledge graph. This is coming from a specific site. This is coming from the index. And what we've seen, I've tried to change a couple of these, and it took a few months. I've got a post coming out in a couple of weeks. Google is storing these. Google is creating, essentially, a second knowledge graph, basically out of our knowledge. They're restructuring the index to answer questions. They're also pulling up these related topics now, and these are even a little more devious. You see up top, this is, I'm going to be in my own way, but that's OK. That's an organic looking link, you could say. You know, maybe the answer is going to take away a click, but at least it goes to your site. These are all coming from the index, but this light gray tiny font, that's your attribution link. These nice blue links that you're more likely to click on, those just go to more Google searches. So again, Google is trying to drive more page views, which is a little strange for them. And it's hard to say what the mentality is there, but they are trying to kind of drive you through this rabbit hole of search. And honestly, these are getting richer and richer every day. This is one for green tea benefits. You've got a bulleted list. You've got some good information. You've got a picture. Google is trying to create content, mini content, out of our content. And what's that going to do to click-through rates? We don't know yet. These are so specific, and these are so hard to measure that we're just seeing the impact. But being number one here for WebMD, it's not what it used to be. And just some other things, uh, we're seeing some new carousels. You might have seen the song carousels. If you type in an artist, get a list of songs or a list of their menus. We're starting to see it for new things. This is uh, Travel Destination Spain, I think. My friend Gianluca found this one. 
So they're, trying, they're structuring knowledge in a lot of new ways. Again, this is probably built for mobile. And then last year, we also saw the launch of Knowledge Snippets. This is an organic enhancement. So here's a search for 2016 Olympics, and we're getting little factoids under the organic. So things like the host city. Right now, that's coming mostly from Wikipedia and from Wikidata. That's probably going to expand, too. All right, these are the scary ones. Those are just the worrisome ones. These are the actual scary ones. As the Knowledge Graph builds, Google is training us to look to that right panel and to see it I don't want to say organic, that to see it as somewhat unbiased. But because that information is so specific and so targeted, it also opens up interesting revenue opportunities. And so what we're starting to see is a crossover between organic and paid that's going to get much more aggressive in the next couple of years. And I just want to show you a few examples. This popped up with the snack packs. If you go to a hotel knowledge panel now, you've got the option for paid bookings directly in it. That's all sponsored. These are ads within a knowledge panel. And this is a product query, uh, Canon EOS Rebel T5. It looks kind of like a knowledge panel. I mean, these are very factoid, brand Canon, resolution 18 megapixel, but everything above it is essentially an ad. This is my boy JT. I always have to throw in a Justin slide. Before you even get any facts about him at all, why not listen to his music on Google Play? That entire block, advertising. This is a sneaky one. Uh, Google kind of dug in the end of last year, just a couple months ago, I think, and started showing lyrics from Google Play and really disrupted that lyrics site market, which is fine with most of us. Sorry if you work for a lyrics site, but some of you guys suck. Um, but You've got the lyrics, and what's at the bottom? Full lyrics on Google Play. OK, that seems OK. Hey, what do you want to do when you get there? Maybe you want to buy the song. Hey, it's not quite advertising, but it's certainly a revenue opportunity for Google. Uh, can watch a movie, sure. So what's going to come next? Because I think we're going to see more of this kind of thing. Like I say, I'm going a little fast, but I got a lot to cover. I don't want you to panic. Everything over on the left that says in testing is something that the system has caught, but we have not seen go live. But it's something that tells us where Google might be headed in their intent. One thing that's kind of a quirk of the Moscast system and a little bit of an accident, we were trying to keep it kind of Google friendly, and it runs at night. And at night is when they do all their testing. And so if you run 10,000 queries in the middle of the night when they do all their testing, and they're running on 1% of queries, sometimes you're going to see those tests. So I have a system that's very crude that I wake up in the morning and says, hey, this might be interesting. And I go, thank you. And it kind of does my work while I sleep. You've seen uh, paid shopping blocks. Usually they're just on the left column or the right column. They're fairly small. This is a new kind they were testing that would cover both columns and be quite a bit larger. This is a paid shopping carousel. We haven't seen that launch yet either. But this fits their mobile first mindset. These were popping up on very competitive queries, and they take up a lot of real estate. They're very large, and they scroll just like regular carousels. This is a scary one. This I saw in July. Thankfully, it hasn't popped up. This kind of looks like a local pack result. Uh, what's the thing? Gas grills. And we get Lowe's and H.H. Gregg and Walmart, and that's fine. And we get a little map. But what's right above that? An ads marker, suggesting that all three of those results were somehow paid results, and that this is a paid local pack. Hasn't launched, but just to see where they might be headed. If you think that's far-fetched, and this, I didn't put testing because we're not sure. Somebody told me they have seen this. You may have seen location extensions on ads. Uh, here's an ad where we saw three location extensions in a row. So basically, a mini local pack on a paid ad, taking up quite a bit of real estate for chimeneas. And I'm sorry, I live in the burbs, and I still don't know what a chimenea is. So maybe that, is that a California thing? Anyone have one? Raise your hand if you have a chimney. Oh, there you go. Congratulations. I hope it's nice. <laughs> I showed you some of the knowledge graph stuff that's popping up. This is one we've seen in testing, a search for Camaro. Oddly, my database has some misspellings just for fun. Looks like a regular knowledge panel. We're getting facts about the Camaro. And then we have paid local in the knowledge graph. So now we have an intersection between knowledge graph, paid, and local. Knowledge graph, paid, and local and organic. 
And although we haven't seen this launch on desktop, it's on mobile now. So expect this to come at some point this year. I've talked to some people who are in the beta program, but it's kind of unclear how wide it's going to go out. And you might have seen this in the last month or two. This is kind of an interesting one. Google not only decided that the content in this area wasn't trustworthy, medical condition content, and they not only did something knowledge graph based, but they actually went out and curated their own content. So for each of these conditions, and there are a lot of them that they've covered, they've created their own content, they've created their own images, they're basically becoming a content creator in this niche. Again, what does that do for all that organic when you can get what objectively is good information in that very customized knowledge panel? And again, that was built for mobile. And this is a weird one. This kind of looks like the new style of answer box, but it's coming out of Wikipedia. And because they basically think, say that they own that information, they're not going to attribute it. it but it's not a direct answer. And I think you're going to see crossover. When we saw them test the new answer boxes, right now we have something that looks very much like an organic link. Those links actually weren't there. So something pressured them to put organic looking links in those boxes. When they originally tested them, there were none. They were just scraping answers and not attributing them. So something pushed them back, but who's fighting that balance and what's going to keep them doing that and what's to stop them from taking that link away? Uh, not much except outcry. All right, so 25 minutes to tell you what's happened in the last six months, what's going to happen, and what to do about it. Tactically, obviously, this is really hard. I want to talk to you about just a few broad strategic things that I think you can look at in the next year. First of all, it pains me to say this as a company who tracks ranking, but we have to get away from this mentality. If you look at your SERPs and you see a number and you say, hooray, we're number one, and you miss this, what does that number one count for? I mean, it's better to be number one than number six, sure. But to be number one when there's three ads and an answer box and a paid shopping result and ads down the side, you're not really seeing this for what it is. So open a browser and look. I mean, I don't, you don't have to do it every week. You don't have to do it for every query. But be aware. Understand your SERPs in context. Understand your audience in context. You have to know what's going on in real searches. I don't think you have to avoid being bot food, even if it's I hate to say it, because it's not that it was a bad business model, but it's not going to work anymore. You know, this is a site called When Is, and what did they do? They basically curated answers about when certain holidays were. So if I wanted to say, hey, when's Mother's Day? When should I send Mom a card? They would list it. That's a perfectly reasonable thing to do. But the problem is this knowledge is far too easy to just take and repurpose and turn into a simple answer. And that's what Google's done. They've been able to buy their own knowledge. They have this information. They can put it in an answer box. And you know what? Whatever we may complain about with Google, we trust it. We trust it as much as some site we've never heard of. And so now I want to send mom a card. That's all I need. Sunday, May 10th. I can schedule it on Google now. That's great. Why would I click on any organic on this page? If your business model is dependent on something like this, I think you're in trouble. I don't think you can survive on easy answers because you can be replaced. I'm going to try not to tout my own stuff much. I'm not talking mouse much today, but I curate the Google Algo Change history, and I've become a very, very big proponent of evergreen content over the last couple of years because I've seen how powerful it can be. And the thing is, with a piece like this, that's curated content that covers multiple years, that's long form, there's no answer to be extracted from it. You can't type in Google algorithm and just get an answer box. There's nothing to answer that question with. And when you have something like this that is updated all the time, that people come back to, they bookmark it, eventually they bypass Google. And so I think you have to look at content investments. I think you have to start putting the money into things that cannot be easily scraped and repurposed, because if you're doing that, your business model is in jeopardy. And hey, you know what? When you have content like that, it also attracts links, and it attracts social, and it ranks number one, too. And since its inception, 1.7 million views, I think about 1.5 million uniques. And this is something I really struggled with last year. And it was a little depressing. I looked at all my blog posts for the year, and I realized that this one piece of content that I built three years before got twice as much traffic as all the blog posts I wrote that year combined. 
And so if you think you're saving something by throwing out dozens of pieces of content or hundreds of pieces of content and slapping it all together, and that that's somehow easier than some kind of big investment or that that's saving you money, you really have to look at the return because I don't think it's there anymore. And then finally, you don't have to build a Mozcash. You don't have to listen to what I say. Pick up your phone and look at your SERPs. Because Google themselves are saying this. This is John Wiley, head designer for Google. Last year, when they completely did their desktop redesign, he said, we launched something pretty big, improvements for search on mobile and tablet devices. Today, we've carried over several of those changes to the desktop. So he told us two things. First of all, all of that went out on mobile first. And second, he specifically said mobile first. The underline is mine, the exclamation point, and the smiley face are John's. This is straight from them. This is from a team lead. Google is scared of mobile. They saw what it was doing to CTRs. So they're worried. They know they have to cater to the mobile market. And so if the, when these changes come, you're going to see them on your phone before you see them on your desktop. So open up the phone and pay attention. And that's the message. Just pay attention. I want you to survive. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm here for. Uh, so be aware and know what's coming, and then you can prepare.